This lecture will be on political organization. So we're going to look at power relationships. And uh, this is an important type of organization because it's one of the ways that we maintain order. So first, the definition of political organization is the existence of groups for purposes such as public decision making and leadership. So this is basically the way power is embedded in a society. Um, the features of political organizations are recruitment principles. So what's the criteria for determining admission to the unit? Perpetuity. And here we mean an assumption that the group will continue to exist indefinitely. Identity markers. Particular characteristics that distinguish one political organization from another internal organization, which is the orderly arrangement of members in relation to one another, procedures, which are prescribed rules and practices for behavior of group members, and autonomy, which is the ability to regulate its own affairs. Now this particular lecture is going to be pretty short. Um, Keep in mind, this is a survey course, so we're not going into detail about any one thing, but we're going to particularly talk about the four types of political organization that have been recognized by anthropologists. Uh, several of them you will not hear about in political science classes as they generally focus on state level societies. But we're going to start our discussion with the first type, which is a band. And a band, <coughs> excuse me, is a foraging group. Uh, the membership is pretty flexible. If people disagree, it's pretty easy to leave the band. Uh, if people act outside of what they're supposed to be, they can generally get kicked out of the band. So membership is flexible. The leadership is pretty informal. There's no permanent leader. It really depends on the skills that the group needs at the time. So if we think about uh, First Nation peoples in North America, we often hear about the chief. Well, they had a peace chief and they had a, a war chief. So they called on people when they needed those particular skills and that was one of the things the Europeans didn't understand and the United States didn't understand was that even though they were treating with a chief it might not be they weren't treating with the the person or the spokesperson for that particular tribe so the leadership cannot enforce their opinions um, they have very limited authority but they do kind of make decisions about migration and food distribution and things like that there's no social stratification between the leaders and the followers. Everybody is egalitarian. And in the sense for anthropology, egalitarian means everybody has access to the materials they need to survive and they have all of the skills necessary to survive. So if you get separated from your group, you have a high likelihood of surviving because you have all the skills you need. Whereas if I was suddenly without the safe way, I would be in big trouble. The next type of political organization is a tribe. Now these are a little bit more formal than bands. Uh, we generally see this in horticulturalists and pad pastoralists. And we may see it comprised of several bands or lineage groups. Uh, they might be connected through a clan structure. And kinship is the primary basis of membership. Now these groups might be 100 people. They might be up to several thousand. So the tribes can get quite large. There's usually a head man or a head woman. So it's usually a hardworking individual that's very generous, has good people skills. Usually charisma is going to be pretty important to be a head man or a head woman because uh, they have to a lot rely on persuasion. <coughs> They're a part-time leader. Uh, they generally determine when to move the herds, when to plant, when to harvest, when feasts should be held, and so forth. Uh, they are responsible to handle both internal and external conflict, but particularly with internal conflict, they have to recruit people to follow them. Tribes often break up into smaller groups in response to threats to the environment or perhaps from outside forces. And this is what we refer to as a segmentary model. So each of these then smaller groups has its own headman and woman and is basically autonomous. Uh, when the threat is removed, they'll regroup. So Amazonian tribes often do this. Uh, pastoralists sometimes do this, um, linked together through a confederacy, and they come together to face threats and then return to their autonomous groups. And the Kashkai in Iran are an example. Now, kind of 
and we're talking about these as like very set types, but it would be better to think about these as a on a continuum. So bands all the way up to states, and there are going to be variations in between. So somewhere between tribes and chiefmen, I mean, we do see this big man, big woman system um, fall. Key individuals devote their efforts to developing personal ties through systems of redistribution and grand feast. Uh, this was first identified in the South Pacific, so Melanesia, Papua New Guinea, um, Vanatinai, which is a Pacific island. <coughs> So again, we're going to see wide variation in tribes. Next one.